Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. Tier 1 Con main CDH event starts tomorrow, and we're here in Denmark to participate. There will be plenty of other events, so if you're around here, come get some games going. This will be a great event, and in today's video we show you your preparation match for it. Going first, we have Tiago from the CDH Portuguese League, playing Cize Adaptive Tutors, a list from Choir Boy 2020 and Vasher. Then we have Kaka, also from the CDH Portuguese League, playing his version of Blue Farm. Our friend and finalist of one of the Lisbon qualifiers, Jimmy Ten Bucks, is on his beloved Yeva, his own take on Inkmox version. And Baal is playing his own version of the Dawn Waker Thrasis list from Comedian. Tiago kept his first seven with a Temple Garden and Marsh Flats for lands, alongside Wild Growth for Ramp. Isan is a great toolbox creature that paired with Cize can get his Emil plus Bell Ringer combo going. Kamal, Fist of Croza is an outlet for infinite mana as well as an Armageddon alongside Elishnorn. Path to Exile and Source to Plushers for some needed removal. Kaka was unfortunate to have to Mulgan down to 5, keeping a Polluted Delta and Arid Mesa for lands, with a Mystical Tutor to pivot his game plan. Ledger Shredder might be enough to help him filter through his deck, and Wheel of Fortune might be the best way to refill from his unfortunate Mulligan. He sent Spell Pierce and Diabolic Intent to the bottom. Jimmy Mulligan once and didn't want to go lower, having found Seedmore Muse already. Despite the single Verdant Catacombs for lands, he has Finorn Elves and Wild Grove for ramp, which is enough to cast Fierce Empath and Heartwood Storyteller that can help refilling his hand. Reclamation Sage is quite underused and great if flashed through Yeva. Finally, Bal kept his first 7 with a Rejuvenating Springs and Flooded Strand for lands. Mox Ember can become online turn 2 through Trasius after the turn 1 Esper Sentinel. Fluster Storm for interaction and Finale of Devastation is a great tutor or finisher. Spellseeker can pivot through his needs. Ready for the match? Players are timing the game to try to complete it in 75 minutes, which is the round time for the Tier 1 con. Tiago starts his turn with a Marsh Flats, cracking it for a Savannah and shortcutting with a Wild Growth on it, passing the turn. Kaka simply plays a Polluted Delta and passes. Jimmy found a Land, a Turn Timber Serpentine Wood, paying 3 life to come untapped, and casting a Finorn Elves, passing the turn. Bal plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Tundra. He shortcuts to an Esper Sentinel and still casts a Mox Ember, followed with his Mana Crypt. He's feeding a possible Dockside from Kaka, but he'd rather bypass any Rule of Law effects Tiago might have. Tiago plays the Homeward Path and casts an e and the Wanderer Bard. In the end step, Kaka cracks his Polluted Delta for an Underground Sea and shortcuts with a Mystical Tutor, triggering Sentinel and unable to pay. He searches for a Force of Will, as he really wants to protect his Wheel of Fortune. He draws it in his turn, plays an Arid Mesa and cracks it for a Plateau, to then cast his Ledger Shredder. Jimmy gets to his turn, plays his Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a Snow-Covered Forest, which he enchants with a Wild Growth, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. He then casts an Arbor Elf, Triggering Shredder, and Kaka discards a Damn, not having enough mana to cast it anytime soon. He's really aiming for that will. We're back to Ball's turn. He wins the Crypt Roll, plays the Rejuvenating Springs, and casts his Thrasius to get his Mox Ember online, passing afterwards. Tiago plays a Windswept Teeth and passes with his Isen online. Kaka unfortunately didn't find any land, but he casts a Lion's Eye Diamond, triggering Esper Sentinel and paying for it, ending his turn with a Blocker, protecting his life total. Jimmy draws, and despite having Sidmorn available, chaining into his Yeva, the Force of Will from Kaka would stop that, so he passes. Balan taps and wins his crit roll again. He plays a Plateau and casts his Brewstarl, entering and triggering to give Thrasius double strike and lifeling until end of turn. He attacks Kaka just to gain 2 life, as Shredder blocks it, and then he passes. In the end step, Tiago activates Isan and searches for an Arbor Elf, which can untap Savannah with a Wild Growth. He also cracks his fetch and finds a Snow Covered Plains. Tiago gets to his turn and plays an untapped Temple Garden, paying 2 life. He then casts his commander Captain Cize through the Arbor Elf and then passes with another Isen activation available. Kaka finally found a land, an untapped Godless Shrine, paying 2 life. With 3 cards in hand, he casts a Wheel of Fortune, desperately wanting to refill. Sentinel triggers and he can't pay. In response, though, Bal casts a Silence on the Wheel of Fortune, and since Kaka is about to lose his hand, he casts his Force of Will, pitching a Swan Song hoping to still maybe cast some rocks after the wheel. Shredder triggers and Kaka draws and discards Otawara, having no other cards in hand. In response to the foe steal, Bal casts a Fluster Storm, and the storm adds copies of it, so he points three copies of Fluster to the Wheel of Fortune, forcing Kaka to crack his LED for it to resolve, and the original Fluster goes towards the Force of Will. Kaka does crack his LED to pay for the copies, but Force of Will is countered, so in response to the silence, Jimmy flashes in his Yeva Nature's Herald. Silence resolves, and then everyone discards their hands and draws new 7 cards. Will this be another one of those case study games where people say wheels are bad? Let's find out. 
We're on Jimmy's turn. He plays a Nyctus Shrine to Nyx and then casts a Survival of the Fittest. Sentinel triggers and he pays for it. He then casts a Mox Diamond, triggering Shredder and Kaka discards a Land. Jimmy discards a Snow Forest and then he attacks Tiago for 4 and passes. Balan taps and finally loses his Crypt Roll. He ponders for a second and attacks Tiago with Bruise, triggering him and targeting himself with it, for 6 commander damage and 6 life back. In the second main phase, Bal plays a Gaius Cradle and then casts an Eternal Witness, entering and targeting his Flusterstorm. He then follows it with an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing the Eternal Witness as an additional cost. Shredder triggers and Kaka discards a Gamble. Everyone is now expecting a Seedborn Muse, which was also Bal's main plan, but having noticed the Eva could produce 8 green mana, the Seedborn would simply die to an end step tutored Kogla, so to much of the table surprise, Bal gets an Avon Mind Sensor. So suddenly, 3 tutors in play were shut off. Since Bal wasn't finding ways to prevent them, he rather slowly grind with Thrasius. He still casts his Springleaf Drum and follows it with a Mystic Remora before passing. In the end step, Tiago still activates Isen, trying his luck. He had almost everything to attempt to win in his next turn through a Grand Abolisher, but he fails to find. Tiago gets to his turn, plays a Yavimaya, Cradle of Growth, and then activates his commander, Sizei, trying his luck again, but failing to find. He then casts a Deafening Silence, triggering Remora and Sentinel and paying the 1, but not the 4. He then passes. Kaka plays an Exotic Orchard and casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He goes into combat and attacks Bal for 4 in the air. Timna triggers and he pays 1 to draw a card. He then casts a Chromox, triggering Shredder, Sentinel and Remora, and he can pay 4, but pays for the Sentinel. He discards a Culling the Weak and imprints a Praetor's Grasp. He passes, but in the end step, Jimmy casts a Beast Whisperer. Despite Jimmy having only 3 cards in hand, Bal responds with a Mana Drain on it. Jimmy gets to his turn, plays a Mikokoro Center of the Sea and attacks Bal for 4 commander damage, passing afterwards. Bal and taps and pays for his Remora to stay. He rolls and takes no damage from the crypt. He draws and gains 4 mana from the Mana Drain, which he uses to activate Thrasius right away. He bottoms and reveals a Finorn Helves. He goes to combat and attacks Kaka for 8, as he targets Bruce with its trigger. In the second main phase, he casts Finorn Elves and follows it with his Arbor Elf, triggering Shredder and Kaka discards a Savin's Reclamation. Take note that LED, Brain Freeze and Savin's are already all in the graveyard. Bal now taps Cradle for 6 to activate Thrasius, bottoming and revealing a Tropical Island. He does it again, bottoming and revealing a source to plowshares. He plays a Volcanic Island and passes. In the end step still, Tiago tries his luck, activating Isen, failing to find. He still flashes in Village Bell Ringer, entering and untapping his creatures, and he now tries his luck with Cize. He finds a Karn the Great Creator to his hand. He gets to his turn, plays a Snow Covered Forest and tries his luck again with Cize. Happy he found something, but said he missed sequence at his land drop, as he found a Gaia's Cradle. He now casts a Blind Obedience, which is one of the outlets to his infinite mana loops. Remora and Sentinel trigger, and he does pay for both, ending his turn. Kaka draws, plays an Ancient Tomb and casts a Dockside Exorcist. That Blind Obedience came right in time, as Kaka just creates 11 tapped treasures. Kaka then attacks Tiago for 6 in the air and actually misses his Timna trigger. The clock pressure is real, dear viewers. He casts a Mox Opal, triggering Shredder, Remora and Sentinel, and he pays 1 but not 4. He surveils a Dark Ritual and passes. In the end step, Jimmy activates Mikokoro, so everyone draws a card. Due to Yavimaya, he untaps Mikokoro with the Arbor Elf and activates it again for another card draw. Jimmy gets to his turn, plays a Deserted Temple and proceeds to combat, attacking Baal with Yeva, because despite the life Baal gains back with Bruce, Yeva can hopefully slowly reach lethal commander damage. He passes and in the end step, Baal proposes to source the Shredder, in order for Tiago to cast his Karn and deny 13 artifact-based mana to Kaka, and Tiago agrees he might do that, so Baal casts it and Kaka gains 7 life. Baal untaps and pays for the Remora, as he has plenty of mana. He takes 3 from the Crypt and draws. He finds and casts an Overloaded Winds of Abandon. Tiago and Kaka pass priority and Jimmy activates Nyctus for 6 green mana. He still untaps it with Arbor Elf to activate it again for a total of 10 green mana and then uses Deserted Temple and tapping Nithus and going to a total of 15 green mana. Everyone looks at the top 4 and fails to find. Bal then untaps Cradle with his Arbor Elf and taps it again for 6 more green mana and activates Thrasius crying and revealing a Brainstorm, which could help in shuffling all his lands in hand as he now plays a Misty Rainforest. He activates Thrasius again, scrying and revealing a Miscast. He wants to proceed steps, so Jimmy flashes in his Yeva, still having 9 available mana. He then casts a Card of Calling for 6, and Bal actually misses both Sentinel and Remora triggers. 
Jimmy finds an Endurance, and while he needed the creatures in his graveyard back in the deck, Kaka has most of the bridge combo available already, and just needs to remove Deafening Silence out of the equation. Tiago points out that he's not going to cast Karn since it would put Baal too much ahead, and therefore miscast and flustered wouldn't be enough to stop Kaka from removing Deafening Silence, so Jimmy targets Kaka with it. Baal then attacks Kaka for 9, targeting his bruise with its trigger. He passes, but on his end step, Kaka casts a Tainted Pact, hoping to find a solution to this board. Remora and Sentinel trigger, and he doesn't pay. The first card is already a Cyclonic Rift, which can answer his problems, so he stops there. Baal discards at cleanup, and we're back to Tiago. He draws, casts a Lanor Elves, and ponders with players that Karn might really not be good now, and having Baal clash with Kaka over the Rift can be good to take Baal out of the game. He plays Gaia's Cradle and passes. In the end step though, Baal casts a his Brainstorm, and then cracks his Misty Rainforest for an untapped Hallowed Fountain. Kaka gets to his turn, and Deafening Silence makes it so that Kaka can only fire his Rift after a non-creature spell cast from Baal, so he simply casts a Wishclaw Talisman, triggering Fish and Sentinel and only paying for the Sentinel. He's hoping to find a Grand Abolisher, to have his Rift resolve, but it will have to be next turn due to Blind Obedience. In the end step, Jimmy activates Mikokoro and everyone draws a card. Jimmy gets to his turn, plays another Snow-Covered Forest and attacks Baal for 7, once again passing as most of his stuff are just flashy creatures. In the end step, Baal activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Dockside Extortionist. He untaps and wins his crit roll, he lets the fish go and draws. He jumps to combat, attacking Kaka for 10 damage, targeting Bruce with its trigger. In the second main phase, Baal activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Scalding Tarn. He activates it again, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Neoform. He untaps Cradle with the Arbor Elf to tap it and activate Thrasius once again, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Lotus Petal. He does it again, scrying to the bottom and revealing an Eladam Rescall. He casts an Elvish Mystic and wants to pass, but in the end step, Kaka casts a Dress Down, triggering Sentinel and he eventually pays. Baal responds with a Force of Will, hoping to maintain the effect of the Aven Mind Sensor. He pitches a Neoform to it, but still in the end step, Jimmy takes the opportunity to cast a Beast Within on the Aven Mind Sensor, triggering Sentinel and not paying. And eventually, the bird is no more. It's expired and gone to see its maker. Tiago now still responds with its own Eladamri Skull, triggering Sentinel and paying for it. He searches for an Elish Norn to his hand, and Baal finally gets to his cleanup, discarding 5. Tiago gets to his turn and sams down the Praetor right away, wiping most of Baal's board in the process. He passes, but on his end step, Kaga casts a Vampiri Tutor. In response, though, Baal casts a free mental misstep. And this way, Kaka goes to his turn. He draws, plays a Tundra and activates Wishclaw Talisman right away, giving it to Jimmy, which hints he's going to try to win or Rift. He searches for a Grand Abolisher, which can't do much now due to Elishnorn, so then he overloads his Cyclonic Rift. In response, Jimmy activates Survival, discarding the wannabe Survival and searching for an Ashaya to his hand. He then activates Nictus for 6 green mana and flashes in his Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. Baal has Muddle Mixture and ponders if he should try to stop Rift here, but apparently Kaka wants to try to survive, and then is once again in his deck, so everything is bounced and Wishclaw as well. Kaka now casts his Grand Abolisher, and everything hints he's not going for another Wrath with it. Jimmy uses his last floating mana to cast a Crop Rotation, sacrificing his turn Timber Serpentine Wood, and searching for a Gaia's Cradle. Abolisher resolves, and Kaka follows it with a Mnemonic Betrayal. This way, he can cast Eladarmor's Call from Tiago's Graveyard, and searches for his Thassa's Oracle. He then casts Wishclaw Talisman and activates it, now giving it to Baal, not too bothered by it. He searches for a Demonic Consultation to his hand. He casts Thassa's Oracle, and then responds to its CTB trigger by casting the Demonic Consultation. It resolves, and he names Black Lotus, exiling his whole library. What he missed, though, was Jimmy's Deserted Temple, which he uses alongside Cradle to untap his Mikokoro, and activate it, making everyone draw a card in response. Therefore, Kaka loses as he attempts to draw from an empty library. No one does anything else at the end step, and we're on Jimmy's turn. In his upkeep, he casts a Noxious Revival, targeting his Court of Calling, and while Baal has Miscast and Flusterstorm, Jimmy still has plenty of mana. But Tiago responds with an Endurance, targeting Jimmy and pitching his Wild Growth. Jimmy draws and ponders for a second. He casts Survival of the Fittest, but he only has one creature card in hand. He casts a Lotus Petal and activates Survival, discarding a Destiny Spinner and searching for an Argothian Elder. He activates Nykthos to help cast Argothian Elder, and still with 4 green mana floating, he casts a Concordant Crossroads, which, this way, he's able to tap Argothian Elder, targeting Cradle and themselves, due to being a force thanks to Ashaya, and therefore generate infinite green mana. He now activates Mikokoro to draw a card, which he can also untap with Argothian Elder. With 3 Mikokoro activations, he finds a Woodland Bellower, which enters and searches for a Duskwatch Recruiter. 
This way, he avoids giving cards to his opponents through a Mika Coral, and can search through his library for every creature card he wants. He finds a Fauna Shaman that he discards through survival to find Allosaurus Shepherd. There are several ways he can win now, so he starts casting several key creatures like Timur Sabertooth and eventually Lay Weaver, in order to have two land and toppers to always be able to respond over anything at instant speed. He also finds an Elvish Reclaimer, which he activates sacrificing a forest and searching for Gaia Reach Sanitarium. This way, he can activate Gaia Reach Sanitarium and all the priority and tapping it, with one of his two land and tappers. He activates it again and again in order to accumulate enough draw and discard activations to kill his opponents through drawing from an empty library. He prevents himself from dying through bouncing Endurance with Timur Sabertooth and recasting it targeting him himself. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Some could say the wheel was quite impactful, removing most of the great creatures from Jimmy and Tiago, like Emil and Seedborn, while eventually it gave a decent hand to Ball. But the turning point was the Eldritch Evolution into Avon Mind Sensor, when everyone was expecting a Seedborn Muse. Deafening Silence was key in slowing down the match, since Ball and Kaka had their guns ready at each other, and the Cyclonic Rift, while it looked like a desperate measure, it almost allowed Kaka to win. He had Tainted Pact already in the graveyard, however, so Consultation was the only go-to, and Mikokoro saved the table. Jimmy eventually got it through Survival of the Fittest, finding Argothin Elder with the help of Concordant Crossroads he got there. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Drunken House Cat, V, RJ, Hita Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Xenon, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!